Hi everybody, uh, thanks for coming back and for viewing this channel, whatever the purpose is that you're doing it for. But anyway, thank you. Um, so I am Myra has set his viewers loose, his subscribers loose on the people who are talking against him. So what is that? I don't know. Um, like freedom of speech, freedom of expression. He has his freedom of speech and expression and they are expressing against certain things that he says and expresses. They're not trying to, I don't think expressing oneself against what another one is saying is trying to bring them down. Now, why would Myra be so concerned of all of a sudden? All of a sudden? Apparently, this is not the first time that he has asked his subscribers to bully and hunt down and bark at and you know it's like you know those um police dogs you know searching for drugs or they're searching for people who are speaking badly on i am myra um and trying to shut them down this is like hitler man <laughs> dictatorship of dictatorship you know it's like i've got the power they've got the power and they're going to shut you down this is censorship so creation of censorship and um, um, elimination of the freedom of speech and expression. That's article, I think it's article 18 from the United Nations about the freedom of expression. And social media gave us that freedom of expression. Sometimes you might see somebody acting like I am Myra. And you can't say anything because they are, again, surrounded by a crowd and they have the power, you know? Like Hitler had the power. He was surrounded by all the Germans to kill the Jews that they didn't like, you know? And those who would go against him were put in jail and executed. That's what's happening right now with Modesta. She is being threatened for execution from Facebook. Uh, because she was speaking against some of the things that she saw wrong with Amira. Amira said it was a consistency that bothered him. But Modesta is following his protocol because he's teaching everybody to be consistent. So she's being consistent. And you might think, why is Modesta doing that though? Why? Uh, well, I can I can see why. As one myself who doesn't have a voice in society, I think, you know, throughout my growing up, the people who ever gave me voice was were my teachers from the previous generation. But when it came to my generation, they were very racist, very discriminatory. As a dark-skinned woman, I didn't have a voice among black people, and therefore I didn't have a voice among society. So it's interesting now. Um, so I felt I got my voice through academics, but then when I decided that I didn't want to be the protocol, I didn't want to go into the health field. So that took away my voice. So I struggled with a degree um, to be able to say what I had to say because I have degree of intelligence. At least when I was in school, I always displayed it. So I consider that I should still have some degree in my adulthood. Right, but I struggle for many years with that being taken away, and I feel as if I don't know it's like magic or something. Ever since I entered the health field, all of a sudden, a lot of walls are being broken down, and I am starting to have some kind of voice. And uh, Facebook was the first social media that allowed me at least to write, I was able to write down my thoughts, monologue online, and um, and then discover. That you know, some of my high school uh, fellows, they actually um, were aware of my existence and of my character, and kept my character alive versus the kind of characters that you, people might paint of you, because we do live in like strangers indeed here in America. When you become adult, when you're a young adult, you're not really in strange, a strange. You're mostly a strange as an adult. But um, anyway. The idea of using social media to be able to establish one's character. Apparently, Modesta has her own personal life and her personality is not to put it out front. I don't think it's nice that, you know, uh, but, you know, because I guess she doesn't want to, I don't know, I guess she doesn't have anything to say to people about her personal life. 
but um, her job is just to criticize Mara. So I guess she made it the type topic of her um, conversation. So her consistency, anyway, is as she is following along with what Myra is advising all of his friends and those whom he like. And mind you, you see all these people after Myra, you know, somehow or another, he broke through some kind of social isolation himself sometime in the past and is able to create this. Um, because he has said severally enough for one to believe him that he is a loner. Like, you know, he doesn't have friends. So we can attest to that. But the problem with that is, um, yeah, but he still have people, you know, who are being loyal to him in one way or another, or at least who are giving him the time of day. And of course they have their own alternate ulterior motives because everybody wants to grow their YouTube channel because this guy made it. And uh, his um, country, Kenya, is supporting him on it. But still, how many people in Kenya, because he kept on saying that, particularly when he was in Kenya, how alone he was. And um, now he's in the United States. We have Ivan supporting him, but we also noticed that there is benefit for Ivan in it, you know, in his social media channel. And Ivan also himself... Um, seem to be maybe like more to himself um he seems to ha try his best to retain his culture and i think that's why he had his cousin hanging around somebody who speaks his language you know part of being homesick to make up for it you always have somebody from home hanging around you know to so that you can continue practicing your culture that's the u.s life for you because when you go out there you're not gonna find people in your culture you don't find that much of a uh, social me medium that much maybe in church but even the churches the churches are very um homogeneous you know, even sometimes your own group, it might not fit because, you know, you got to follow. It's about following people. And this is the whole thing with Myra. It's about you are like the pastor of the crowd, whoever is following you. And uh, instead of being able to sometimes feel comfortable, it's either, either you're a leader where people are following you and you could make your own space where Myra is. He's trying to weed out people he doesn't like. And or... Um, Un unless you fit into that so society is sometimes hard so he brings in somebody from home he can speak his language at home that's that's awesome because you know you need that continual so nourishment you know um while away from home so um you know so ivan yes he plays the, it's nice that they have this kind of friendship but we don't know how long it's gonna last we don't know how strong it is we don't know to what degree interest ends and friendship begins etc you know and then there's vanessa apparently vanessa has uh no interest no romantic interest in myra she's an aspiring attorney and um and she does, and you know, she doesn't want the things that Myra wants. So we already see that. So we already see that isolation from Myra. So Myra hasn't. I don't know yet. He. I guess he hasn't found his niche in the United States. I noticed his uh, subscription has been at four thirty, um, four sixty four for several days. Sometimes his subscription goes at least up by one a day, but it's sort of stagnant ever since he came to Pennsylvania, because not Pennsylvania to Maryland, because I guess in Maryland it's it must be hard for him. You know, he's not he doesn't find that crowd. Um, yeah, in Miami, when he missed out spring break, if he really wanted to have a crowd, spring break on the beach, on South Beach, he would have found the crowd that he probably needed to build his channel. Um, because I know he's about building his channel. Um, a lot of people are wondering, like, you know, if it, you know, how could it be possible to work? There are many ways that, you know, you could research. I'm not going to research for you, but you can do your own research to find out how he can get work permit to work um, while he's in the U.S. The U.S. has a lot of exceptions, especially there are so many jobs out there. Even an employer, like if somebody really wants to hire Myra, he can get like employment um, visa. They can change his visa like that to employment visa. 
and he can get work. So if he wants to work, he will be able to work and he can even extend his stay in America, change his visa status, making it more, even better perhaps. Because, hey, I, some people are like, oh, you do, you're such an idiot. I'm not an idiot. I have, I'm from Haiti. Hello. <laughs> I, and I grew up here. I have family who come back and forth. I have certain relatives who don't want to come to the U.S. at all. You know, um, they, you know, they're professionals in Haiti, engineers and uh, people in the medical profession in Haiti. And they don't want to come here. So they just travel with, uh, you know, on a tourist visa. And sometimes they come in, they get themselves work permits, they work work um in certain occasions after coming here for so long they get their they um get their green cards um you know i have family with all different statuses and if they want to work they work because they're gonna find a way and um being that i came here legally i can say most of my family are legally here so as far as the illegal immigrants you know um, I understand that a lot of Haitians um, come in here illegally, but I've been here for decades, since I was six years old. So, um, and we are all, we all came in legally. Um, I don't know about, you know, like people, maybe far, far relatives who may have come in, but they don't even interact with me. All right. So, um, so you can come in on a visa and uh, ask the government for a different visa and uh, if you find opportunity you know there i understand he's probably be, he is beyond student age and he's obviously study is not his thing but if work if he cared to work he would have found some kind of work permit somehow one way or another there are work permits out there that he could get to do some kind you know like some menial job so he could raise money um but i don't know i guess um people are claiming that you know if you say anything against mara you're a hater um, no, I'm not a hater and I'm not a lover either. I, because I am not a lover of people that I consider as colorists. And, um, his attack on Modeste actually is just giving him the freedom to practice his colorism as he goes and puts on a pedestal, Vanessa, who obviously expresses no interest in him romantically, but he's putting her on a pedestal. He still wants that freedom to just put black women down. And I have an issue with that. Even though as that, you know, but you know, I have a paradoxical issue with that because yes, I'm gonna talk about it. Um, because it actually helps me, you know, to point it out because um as he is discovering the um, U.S. culture. Here in the U.S., it's very difficult to point out um, people who are in, who um, engineer the system and how they're going to practice colorism. It's difficult to point them out because they, they can easily come in and do a, that hello kind of thing he was talking about to be familiar, and then they estrange you to incriminate you if you ever come out and talk against them about their colorism. So Myra is, I guess he's learning the social engineering of colorism, but I think Ivan is there. Ivan's slick. <laughs> Ivan is slick. Ivan is enjoying himself. Um, yeah, Ivan, you got to help your boy Myra get more subscribers. Um and you know that it depends on what community he's in. He needs the subscribers, but at the same time, encourage him to find different means of working. Let him get some work experience um, here in the U.S. And um, I know people are out there, you know, they can't wait to just tell me off. That's okay. I'm used to it. <laughs> That's my whole life. I'm used to it. Believe me. You see this black woman here when I was seven years old in this school in New York, uh, little black boys used to tell me to go back to Africa, go back to Africa. Right now there's a YouTuber who, who identifies himself as go black to Africa. And funny enough, he's older than me, so he wouldn't have been my classmate, but he reminds me of those boys and um it, 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 and very likely that i think he, he was from the 60s anyway so um so maybe just a decade away so the thing is 
he is like you know it was all that all that generation of black people or black young people who are being taught to hate dark-skinned women to hate black women and to call us Africans and to go back to Africa and then when I grew up and went to college in Pennsylvania I went to Gettysburg I discover that the um uh, uh, the black young black men there were I guess awakened um you know um and wanting to be African. And that's when I came across the term African-American was in Gettysburg College uh, because I had never heard of the word before. It was always go back to Africa, you little blackie, you know? That's colorism, guys. These are just some scenarios of colorism. So here, Mara is putting us down in a, without even putting, you saying words, not, he doesn't have to say goodbye, that he is African, he is a proud African, but you have to realize that the colorism started in Africa, and he is, and he's trying to find his way to engineer himself, and of course, colorism is very strong here in America, I'm sure he'll probably find the right social environment where he can practice it, but um, for him to practice it very likely, yeah, he will be able to practice it very comfortably here in Miami, um, up north, in Pennsylvania, in New York, uh, I don't think so because you know what? I remember when I was when I went to school in New, when I was in school in New York. Um, after I left Penn, the school in uh, Gettysburg, I went to New York, and I encountered for the first time colorists. It was in New York that I encountered them in school. Though they were not from New York, they were from Florida. <laughs> And I remember once telling myself, oh my God, I never want to find myself in a place with these people, these racist black men. And they were racist Haitian men. So ironically, when it came to work after college, unfortunately, I found myself down here in Miami and um, daily encountering, daily encountering colorism. And um, so, yeah, so Myra will be very comfortable here. Um, he will be happy, you know, as he shows off his light-skinned or Spanish women to black women, um, never really acknowledging the existence of black women. You know, uh, Myra, it, it, I don't think Myra can deal with the African-American mindset. And this is why I was like, Ivan should keep him there for a while. After, I, after they had that meeting, I noticed that he had me, a meeting with a lot of middle-aged African-Americans. And I'm like, Oh, wow, I am so proud of Ivan. <laughs> so proud of him. You know, um, I'm sure it was probably culture shock to Myra because these African Americans are awakened. They are awakened um, to understanding the importance of what it is to be an African American. And uh, Myra's, um, a lot of Myra's subscribers obviously do not understand what that is. They are pushing on his colorist um, acts and um, and pushing him to be what he is doing, and that is the um, act of destroying the image of black women, as he um, as as he leaves behind in Africa certain dark skinned women that he assisted. Of course, we you know with the cajoling of his relatives, he assisted a few. But remember, they are close friends, close relatives. But Myra is really pushing light-skinned Spanish women and destroying black women. And um, and he just shut, he's trying to shut down Modeste and everybody else who is talking about the, his fallacies. All right. Um, for me, I'm focusing on the colorism. Modeste focuses on a lot of stuff, man. But um, I'm focusing on the colorism and um, the, the freedom of expression that is being attacked right now. I'm used to it. As I said, I've experienced colorism. So, I, you know, I was shocked when I noticed it when it didn't happen earlier. So when and then I noticed when it did happen was I somehow started talking about Myra and I gained uh, 20 subscribers and I'm like, oh, my God, 20 subscribers <laughs> just um, within uh, from a video that I did. And I said, OK, so um, this guy is like the Jesus Christ. So then people start nagging at me for talking about this guy. Like, you know, how could I talk about King Myra, you know? 
I guess because the little black female Haitian slave here, I noticed he went to Haiti, and of course he didn't give our country the the footage that he gave to the Dominican Republic, you know, the Dominican Republic with more mulattoes, more mixed race, light skinned people. But the darker, blacker country, he only went out like once, but he didn't give us the kind of footage that, of course, we Haitians can cover ourselves. Um, so anyway, I'm speaking, I'm making, I'm taking advantage of my freedom of speech because it is not given to me as a dark-skinned black woman that often. So just before I go to work, on my way to work, I decided I'm going to make this video because Modeste is not the only one who those who people are like uh, ants after trying to put down. I've also had a couple of people come and sneer at me for speaking and I'm going to continue to speak. Uh, be it Myra, be it somebody else that I encounter. But Myra, I thank him because he was the first YouTuber that displayed colorism enough to push me to talk about it. Um, not to talk about colorism. I've been talking about colorism forever. But to use him and his actions as an example of a colorist black man. Thank you. Bye-bye.